finally, after all these months of waiting, we're getting a more steady and complete integration of NVIDIA's Deep Learn Super Sampling into games. The machine learned reconstruction technique has seen its ups and downs, and most of the time actually being spent down, if I may say so. Both Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus launched with less than stellar visual results from DLSS, but Metro Exodus' most recent patches have convinced me that DLSS can have its place among the pantheon of reconstruction techniques given the right scenario. Even without the latest update to Metro Exodus, I thought that DLSS at 4K output rivaled an 1800p scaled result, but had the real advantage of greater performance in that title with ray tracing enabled. Late and after launch, Anthem has become the next game to get the DLSS treatment, and I thought it would be particularly interesting to go and take a look at it. At launch, I noted how incredibly heavy Anthem was at ultra settings and at 4K, basically impossible to keep anywhere near 60 FPS. The game just has this incredibly wild frame rate based upon how much transparency is on screen and what you're looking at. It's completely unstable and hard to actually target a real frame rate. So the idea of being able to maintain a 4K-like looking image while saving performance via reconstruction is a notion that I really like a lot. In fact, Tom Clancy 2's The Division 2 Electric Boogaloo in Washington DC really sold me on that idea. Good reconstruction techniques at a high pixel density at 4K make it an easy choice if that means saving performance while being able to keep up settings to a higher level. It would be great if DLSS could offer that in general, and in Anthem in particular, based upon how heavy this game really is. Diving right into the patch, it is rather immediate that you can notice DLSS's uptick in performance next to the native 4K presentation. Interestingly, how much of an uptick of performance that may be is very dependent upon what type of content is happening on screen. It can be around 20% performance increase at worst, maybe averaging around 25-29% to or so, but can go all the way up to 66% more performance than native 4K in some scenes. Anthem has extremely varied stress on the GPU, with any hint of full screen alpha or alpha particle effects in general really absolutely thrashing the GPU. So the areas where that is the case is where we see the best scaling in DLSS's favor here on this ASUS ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti. Those areas where the rendering of the scene is more bound by other things, such as the density of geometry or the complexity of a certain type of shading, well, the difference is less than 66%. And interestingly, we can see a number of moments here where the Ryzen 1700X I'm using in combination with this GPU is coming up short and is bounding the result by the CPU. Wow, Anthem sure is heavy on the CPU if you remove that lower bound as set by the GPU. In terms of internal resolution making up the reconstruction, I've counted around 1440p or 2560 by 1440 which is a very common number now that I think we should expect for many DLSS integrations targeting 4K, such as it is in Metro Exodus. Quality at first glance mimics exactly that same sentiment I had with Metro Exodus. When you put native 4K output with TAA next to 4K DLSS, or back to back actually, you notice rather immediately that 4K DLSS does not look like a true 4K. At the same time, we can say this of really any reconstruction technique in fact, which is something Guerrilla Games actually made a big point of in its presentation on its reconstruction technique not too far back. So in what ways does it actually not manage to look like a real 4K image, or a native one? I think the biggest difference occurs in the actual overall look of the image as a whole, before we even zoom into it and point out the finer things. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm noticing it now after having seen DLSS in action in around 5 different titles or so, but the machine learned image reconstruction has a certain look to it. The term I want to use is style. The base maths behind reconstruction are both affected by the images fed into it from which it learns, and generally what it is basically biased by. This is not a bad thing I would say, but the DLS images have a particular level of softness, and a particular look to their lines. It's different than that per pixel precision that you're used to seeing in native rendering, or even in other reconstruction techniques, or in TAA in general. It is different looking. I think in general though, it is a pleasing look at 4K. 
but the resolve of shapes and detail is different and that really need be noted. As mentioned, getting into a direct image zoom you can see how vegetation in the distance looks radically different usually. 4K native showcases individual bits in detail where 4K DLSS shows a more approximate equivalent of that vegetation that showcases less of those individual bits in detail. Interestingly though, this has a macro effect on the image as a whole. The extra detail in that 4K native image on certain objects such as leaves, there can be individual flashes of light from that specular sheen of those objects at a high frequency which can make the image have the appearance of aliasing in motion. And not aliasing like you see from the edge of an object, but aliasing from the detail being either too small for a pixel to capture, or from a rapid change of intensity from one frame to the next. This can look like a little bit of a flicker actually at 4K native, and is a telltale sign that you're looking at a real-time generated image, something film does not have, or good offline CGI does not have as well. DLSS resolves less detail most definitely, but can look more stable on certain screen elements such as small vegetation here, or high frequency specular reflections in normal maps like you can see on the ground here. This is particularly interesting if you consider how much more low resolution the DLSS internal image actually is. Other features share this narrative. Just looking right into the intro screen right here, you can see how DLSS resolves less texture detail inside of an edge than native 4K, and once again with a certain look to that edge actually. This same principle can be applied to all opaque screen elements basically. DLSS runs areas limited in performance by transparent elements such as particles, much better as you can see here and here. 4K in Anthem with the normal native settings is using TAA, and like most TAAs, transparency is hard to track for them, and not easy to account for perfectly, so you tend to get a bit of a ghosting within and trailing a transparent particle or effect as it moves. Anthem does this better than most titles I would say, but there is still a ghosty trail following a transparent element. It is faint, but still there. This is one area where DLSS has an advantage of just seemingly functioning differently I guess, so there's no real visible ghosting on Anthem with alpha particles with DLSS in areas where you would see that with TAA on. At the same time, as I say that, DLSS has its own share of problems with transparent elements. In Metro Exodus, I noted how certain transparent elements like the spider web here or the face of RTM's watch look noticeably chunky and like a strange upscale of the internal resolution. The same thing can happen in Anthem if you look at this waterfall here at native 4K with TAA. A bit ghosty, but it looks the same resolution as the rest of the screen elements. Switching over to DLSS, you can see that the waterfall is now noticeably lower res than the rest of the screen around it almost. This applies to many of the transparent elements in the game. As far as I know, DLSS works with the motion vectors from opaque geometry that TAA also works with. I'm actually not sure how it compensates for transparent screen elements, but they seem to be either left out or reconstructed in a less than perfect way at the moment. So it's not a perfect 4K and has this slight positive of greater image stability and motion on certain screen elements. It does perform quite a bit better than 4K, which is nice to see, but does it perform as well as its nearest common equivalent? In our 4K in a budget series we found that 1800p or 3200 by 1800 is a great near 4K like experience. Heck, it's gotta be if developers think the same thing for PS4 Pro. In Metro Exodus, I looked at a very similar resolution by enabling the 0.7 sampling option that game has and found DLSS to have a similar visual result on most game surfaces, but allowed for better performance with ray tracing being enabled. Here in Anthem the story has a twist that needs some explaining. DLSS in Anthem does indeed run better than 1800p. On average, in an average scene, that looks to be around 5 to 10 or maybe even 12% better performance with DLSS 4K versus 3200 by 1800 linear upscaled to 4K. The funny thing is, Anthem, unlike other Frostbite games, has no resolution slider, even in the config file. Wait a minute, DLSS enabled? DLSS desired? Desired? What? 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 So it performs a little better than our usual resolution scaled candidate to get a near 4K look. 1800p. But the visual differences here are actually more interesting than the performance. 
When we do the comparison, we see some unique differences here between native 1800p and the image with DLSS engaged. Just flashing back and forth here in the menu on the macro level, I think you can see how specular elements on the screen and the sheen from metal are in fact brighter with DLSS versus how TAA resolves those screen elements. I'm not sure which is actually closer to the ground truth of how the material should look, but it is a difference nonetheless. Zooming into your average texture, you can see how DLSS resolves less texture detail at a distance than 4K and even less than 1800p actually. Yet when you look at an edge where TAA could have trouble with, 1800p can have pixel swimming. DLSS actually doesn't have that same instability here that we're seeing in the 1800p image. This is really an interesting point that I noticed while playing the game in DLSS versus 1800p and native 4K. On opaque geometry, DLSS tends to offer more stable visuals, not necessarily as detailed in a still image, but that detail at these resolutions can actually tend to match up with high frequency changes and aliasing. To show you what I mean, take a look at the scene here in the jungle in Anthem. I would like you to concentrate here on the 4K and 1800p image and notice how the tiny edges of the armor hit by light tend to form tiny highlights that rotate in and out of existence as the camera and model moves. They produce aliased edges and a general flickery look actually. Now pay attention to those same elements in the DLSS image. DLSS is of course in fact a lower internal resolution than the previous two, yet its resolve and reconstruction creates a more stable image in motion on these opaque screen elements. This even interestingly carries over to certain shots of motion blur where DLSS seems to smooth over those individual samples visible in the motion blur itself. This even though the spacing of samples at a lower resolution should actually logically be more obvious. So motion blur and some opaque elements are less aliased in motion than they would be in the native TAA result. Yet DLSS's lower internal resolution does seem to have some negative macro effects regarding another screen element. Bloom, I at least think so, in a direct side-by-side -side with 1800p and native 4K seems to pop and flicker more in a manner that takes up more screen space. Even at native 4K, the game's bloom is susceptible to aliasing like this that you can see here. But subjectively, I feel like I noticed that popping in the bloom itself more in the DLSS image. Maybe this is just because the opaque geometry is more stable and it amplifies the bloom's instability and in contrast, but I really think I can see it more in the DLSS image. What do you think? DLSS is curious right now. Its reconstruction is definitely working finally and producing results that are generally pleasing next to native 4K and its competitor of scaled 1800p. And interestingly, it seems to be more stable in motion than both of those native resolutions on opaque objects while also performing better than both of them. At the same time, it offers less visible detail in textures in the surfaces themselves, and transparency seem to be unaffected by reconstruction at the moment, looking a bit chunky. I do think that it is a good alternative to resolution scaling in this title especially if you prefer a more stable image in general. Extra detail can actually translate to extra noise and motion sometimes. That greater stability on opaque edges makes me wonder how DLSS would work as a normal anti-aliasing alternative to standard TAA we see in games. There was the promise of DLSS 2x, which has to really exist in any game at all so far. This would take the principle of DLSS and apply it to anti-aliasing at native resolution. I would really like to see Nvidia offer that option in a few games, as its results even below native resolution as a reconstruction technique are very impressive in how it keeps that image surprisingly stable. Until Nvidia does that though, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you would like to talk about DLSS with me and how it looked here based on this video, well, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.